Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was, is, is to come, who has purified his word seven times and preserved it to all generations. And I am so excited about this, which is why I had to make God's Wrath Part 2, because I just found a way to make columns. And I really wanted to share the the seals, trumpets, and vials, you know, the side-by-side, -side, so you can see the perfection of God's word. And then I was going to share a couple things on the New Testament and Old Testament just to show how it all flows together because it's the lies that make it confusing because the lies won't fit. And it just it just makes it very confusing. But when you look at the word alone, it's just pure and it's simple. So I just wanted to share on that. And then uh, bear with me because this is the first time I've ever used this uh, here little WPS office or whatever. Um, ah, uh, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> trying, but I'm sure I can get used to it and be able to do some neat things. First thing I'd like to know is how to make one page columns and another page not, because I wasn't able to do that in this one. I wish I could have. Anywho, so let's get into this. I'm going to start with the seals, trumpets, and vials, and uh, I tried to make everything fit on one page, but I didn't want to go any smaller than a 12 font, so... You know, got to do a little scrolling. Hope it don't drive you crazy. Um, but anyways, Revelations chapter 6 for the sixth seal says, I beheld, oh, and by the way, all this little creamy highlight stuff, I didn't do it and I can't get rid of it. So one of those things I'm going to have to figure out. So anyways, Revelation 6 verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake. This is very important to remember. Okay, the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, the moon became as blood, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Very important to remember. Um, for the great day of his wrath is come. Important to remember. Just in this small portion of scripture right here, and this is only three verses of the sixth seal, we have a great earthquake, sun, moon, and stars thing going on. We got the mountains being moved. Um, we have his wrath, okay? So when you just look at this alone right here, when Jesus said in the Gospels concerning the sign of his coming, you know, the one thing he said is that the sun will be dark and the moon won't give us light, and then you will see the sign of the Son of Man coming, okay? To gather his elect. So this right here fits perfectly with what the Lord said would happen before he would come. Okay. And then notice his wrath because we know the saints, they are not appointed to wrath. So when he sends forth his angels to gather his elect, it is then he will pour out his wrath. And it's telling us right here, his wrath has come at this point. So now let's take a look at the, at the seventh uh, trump here. Let me move this up just a hair. Okay, it says, the seventh angel sounded, there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the nations were angry, and your wrath is come. So we see here again, just like the sixth seal, his wrath is come in the seventh trump, in the time of the dead that they should be judged, that you should give reward unto your servants, the prophets. And to the saints and to them that fear your name, small and great. And consider this right here, okay? The Lord said when he comes, he said, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give. So when he's saying, you know, the time has come, this is his coming. Okay, you can, you can trust his word. Um, and then it says, And you should destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and a great hail. Okay, so these things right here are very important also because, like I said in the last one, if you saw it, these things accompany the presence of the Lord. Okay, when he descended on Mount Sinai, there were lightnings, voices, thunderings, an earthquake. Okay, he, he's like a, a storm. <laughs> His presence it has a storm, you know. And he's a consuming fire, you know, what a mighty God we serve. Anyway, so I want to look at um, the vials too. And yeah, I know the vials are called the vials of wrath, but it's thumos, okay, God's angry judgment. But let's look at the seventh vial. 
Okay, the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. There came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Okay, what is done? Well, let's go on here. There were voices, thunderings, lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. Now notice this great earthquake is right here in the sixth file, okay? And then, like, these go together. You cannot separate them. There's just no way, okay? Because, like, you have the thunders, the thunders, the voices, lightnings, or they're here in the seventh trump, too. Okay, but let's go on with the seventh file. Such as was not, since men were upon the face of the, or were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give in her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Okay, so we got wrath in the sixth seal. We got wrath in the, the seventh trump. And here we have wrath in the seventh vial. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And that's the same as the, the seals right here. Every mountain and island were moved out of their places. They're done. They're gone. Okay, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. And this is the same, the same hail right here, great hail in the, um, man, you know, I don't like this app as much as like word pad, but anyways, great hail. Okay. Great hail. They, they're all, they, they proclaim the same thing, the presence of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, the day of his wrath. Okay. They all say the same thing. So we can know that we're going to be here through those things. And then I wanted to share here. Some of the scriptures from the Old Testament concerning these exact same things. In Isaiah 64, verse 1, it says, Oh, that you would rend the heavens. Remember he said the heavens will roll up like a scroll. Okay, that you would come down, that the mountains might flow down at your presence. When the melting fire burns, the fire causes the waters to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did terrible things, which we look not for, you came down, the mountains flowed down at your presence. So we can see in the scripture here too, it's just like, you know, in the sixth seal, the, the mountains are thrown down and we know that the earth and the heavens are reserved unto fire. And when it says here that the nations may tremble at your presence, wow, you know, it's like uh, when they hide in the, the caves and the dens of the rock in the sixth seal because they're terrified. Okay, this is the presence of the Lord. This is what happens. Okay, and then in Nahum 1 over here, it says, The mountains quake at him, the hills melt, the earth is burned at his presence. Why? Because our God is a consuming fire. The fire goes before him. The fire, the fire is the judgment that's coming upon the heavens and the earth. It says, yeah, so the earth is burned at his presence. Yeah, the world and all that dwell therein, that's all burned up too. Who can stand before his indignation? And isn't that what it says in the sixth seal? You know, the wrath of the Lamb has come. Who can stand? Nobody. And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. So we see these things are definitely from the presence of the Lord. And I wanted to look at Isaiah 13 concerning these same things. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, both cruel with wrath, there's wrath, and his fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, he de shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it, and that is with fire. Okay, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, the sun shall be darkened and is going forth, the moon shall not cause her light to shine. See, these things all accompany his coming. Okay, and I will punish the world for their evil, the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And it's funny because they're going to go from arrogancy to, and haughtiness right into trembling and hiding themselves. Okay, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Because, yeah, there's not going to be, it says there's so few left a child could write them. Um, therefore... I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. So we can see every time in all the scriptures, there's this, the mountains, the sun, moon, and stars, fire. Okay, these are the things that accompany his coming to pour out his wrath. And I wanted to show Ezekiel 38. I know there's a lot of different ideas about Gog, um, but the one thing that, you know, is sure 
is that he's a world ruler and God does not like him. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to share this scripture because it, it really does go. When you look at the sixth seal, seventh trump, seventh vial, and these scriptures we're just looking at, you know, it really does go that this is something that happens at the end here. So in verse 19, it says, For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking. Remember, there's that great earthquake. There's a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea, the fowls of the heaven, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. Remember, like over here, the nations will tremble at his presence. And this isn't just going to be, you know, like it says here, men. This is the fishes, you know, the beasts, the fowls. This is everything. Okay, and he goes on to say, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. So, you know, this Gog thing right here, this is the coming of the Lord. Okay, and then he goes on to say, I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And, you know, the Lord, when he, when they're all gathered together, you know, at the Battle of Armageddon, it's like he pleads with men. He, he would that they should repent. And he says, you know, he'd... There's a scripture that says he, bore, he burns up his thorns and briars in one day. But if he will make peace with, with it, if they will make peace with him, let him make peace. You know, he's willing to forgive. He's willing to pardon. But anyways, we know, you know, if you've read the book of Revelations, there's pestilence, there's blood. You know, these are some of the judgments that are poured out. Of course, it does tell us that they don't repent, though. Okay, and I will reign upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him. An overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Now you remember, if you go back to the seals, trumpets, and vials, there's a great hail, great hail. So this really fits. This this portion of scripture here really fits with the coming of the Lord. Um, though I know a lot of people kind of think it's something that happens before that, but I think it fits perfectly. And then I would like to share these last scriptures here. Um, Matthew 24 and Mark 13, you know, and I didn't include Luke 21 because I only have three columns and I really wanted to share this Isaiah 24. So, you know, Mark, tw Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, they're all the, the same question asked the Lord, what is the sign of your coming? Okay. So you can go look at Luke if you want, but for this one, I just included, uh, the Matthew and Mark. And I just wanted to note here cause it's, they both say immediately after the tribulation of those days. This one says, but in those days and after that tribulation. And, you know, a lot of people have looked at the tribulation as God's wrath, but it is not. The tribulation is for the saints. It's like the, he makes war against the saints. Like the Lord said, you will be hated of all nations. That is our tribulation. You know, he said you will betray, be betrayed by family. You know, you will be betrayed by brethren. Some of you they will cause to be put to death. That is the tribulation. It's the time of trouble, okay? Um, but anyway, so after that, then we have the sun and the moon, you know, the powers of heaven being shaken. The stars fall, okay? That's what we have after that tribulation. And that, what? That is one of the signs of his coming, that the day has come. Okay, and then as you go on in these, you know, that because it tells us right after this, then you see the sign, you know, of the Son of Man in heaven. And that sign, personally, I think, is like when he was ascending up and the the two angels, you know, were standing there and they're saying, oh, you men of Galilee, you know, why do you stir up in heaven? The same way he left, he's coming. And I do believe that he ascended in a cloud. And I think that cloud will be the sign when he returns, too. And then, if you consider the thunderings, the, the lightnings, you know, those things, uh, it's kind of like a, a storm cloud, I think, because those things accompany his presence. Anywho, so, and then after, you know, you see this sign, on oh, here it does even mention, yeah, coming in the clouds, but after this sign, you know, the sun, moon, and stars, and you see this sign, it says, then he sends his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and there's that seventh trump, and they shall gather together his elect, and there's that time that everyone receives their reward, Okay, and it's from one end of heaven to the other, you know, from the four winds. The four winds, that's just north, south, east, and west, you know.
but from the uttermost part of earth to the uttermost part of heaven. I like this one because it mentions the heaven and the earth where this one's just the heaven, one end of heaven to the other. But we're told, you know, the, the mystery of God's will, you know, is to gather together. Like it says in that scripture in Ephesians 1, it says at the appointed time, at the dispensation of the fullness of times, he will gather together in one all things that are in heaven and that are in earth in him. Okay. And so we know this, these things just the scriptures fit perfectly. Now, when you look at, um, Isaiah 24, it talks about, um, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. And that is the sins of the people and it shall fall and not rise again. Remember that scripture above, it said, um, the cities of the nations fell. It's like what this is saying when it says here, the earth is going to fall and not rise again. It's because it's going to be destroyed. The, the heavens and the earth, which are now, are kept reserved unto fire. Okay, they're going to be destroyed. And that's why we have the promise of a new heaven and a new earth. So above when it said the cities of the nations fell, it's because they're destroyed. It's like when Babylon, Babylon's going to fall. It's going to be destroyed. These things are temporary. They're not eternal. They're not going to continue on. And it says, It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. This is speaking of both the spiritual and the physical. You know, the rulers. Because we, we don't battle flesh and blood, but powers, prince, pallies, rulers of the darkness. And then, you know, we have the kings of the earth who also gathered together against the Lord. It says, and they shall be gathered together because we know in the, the sixth vial, they're gathered together to the battle of Armageddon. And that's the seventh is when the Lord comes. Okay. As the prisoners are gathered together in the pit. Here, let me scroll up a little bit. And they shall be visited. Or I'm sorry, after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded. The sun is shamed. There's the sign again. When the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem before his anxious ancients gloriously. And this, you know, this speaks to me of, uh, you know, when he said, come, come hither, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he showed him a great mountain. And that is Mount Zion. In the book of Revelation, the heavenly Jerusalem is the city of the living God. Okay. I know everyone always looks at the earthly, but this is not, you know, the Jerusalem of God is Jerusalem above. Okay. And so this is where he's going to reign because his people are the city. His people are his bride. Um, but anyways, so this is the end. And I hope that you can see in all the scriptures, whether you look at the old Testament, the new Testament, you know, you can look at the words of Jesus. You can look at the book of, of revelation, but you're going to see all these things. They perfectly go together. I mean, it's not, we're not going to have God's wrath here and then God's wrath again and then God's wrath again. He's not going to descend from heaven three times, you know, and there is no secret pre trib rapture. Okay. There just, there is not. That's a lie. And that's why everybody gets so confused when they look at the things of, that are written in the word of God. They're so confused because it don't make sense unless you eliminate that lie. When you eliminate that lie, it all flows perfectly together. We have one hope, and that hope is the hope of Christ's second coming. He came once before as the lamb. The next time he comes as the lion of the tribe of Judah, in all his power and glory, every eye shall see him. And when he comes, all these things here in the seventh trump, the seventh vial, and the sixth seal, they're going to accompany his presence. You know, there's not going to be nothing left. Everything's falling. The kingdoms of this world, like it says here, are going to become the kingdoms of our Lord. He is going to reign forever. We are going to reign with him. So anyway, I hope that you can see the, the perfection of these things, you know, just the truth of the word of God, because what is written is going to come to pass exactly as it is written. We can trust the word just as much as we can trust the Lord. Um, anyway, so I hope this blessed you in some way. Uh, and, uh, Prayers for me to get the understanding of this app, to be able to use it, you know, um, because it's definitely, 
trying my patience, <laughs> but I, I know I'll get it eventually. But anyway, uh, God bless you.